Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of the Uscript Fast Gameplay Setup Preview. In the first part, we set up a door alarm that included playing sound and animation and triggering logic. In this video, we will focus on setting up a console that we can hack to disable the door alarm. We will be covering new things such as global variables, changing materials, using reflection to set a component property, and listening for a specific key press. Let's get started. When we last left off, we had set up a door alarm to go off if you got too close to the door by entering a trigger. Let's play the game and see that in action. What we need to do now is give the player a way to get past the door alarm. What we're going to do is allow the player to go over to the conveniently located computer terminal and hack it to disable the alarm system. Let's go into Uscript and do that now. The first thing we need to do is create a new variable so we can check the state of things in our scene. The first is to see if the alarm has been hacked. This time, however, we're going to create a global variable, sometimes called a named variable. This will allow us to read and write to this variable from anywhere in the uscript without needing to draw lines to the same physical variable. As an example before we get started, let's take the speed in seconds on our rotates. We currently have it to set to 1 on both of these. If I wanted to change this to a global variable, all I need to do is click on 1, come here, and name it. As you can see below the variable now, it has the name rotate speed. If I do the same on the other one, they will now both share the same value, which means if I come into one and I change the value here, as you can see, it'll update the other one as well. This is very convenient and powerful in making new scripts. Now let's make a global variable for finding out if the alarm has been hacked. The first thing we're going to do is create a comment. This is just going to be an area where I define where our global variables go for the scene. Now in our case, we're going to just need a Boolean. So we'll move this up here. And we'll give it a name. And we'll keep it set to false. Now we can use this variable in our alarm setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert something in between the trigger and the alarm setup that checks to see if the alarm should actually go off using the variable we just set. So I'm going to delete these links. I'm actually going to copy this. And we're going to use it down here. I'm going to come over and we're going to find a compare bool. Place that in the scene. And we're actually going to use two of these. One for each line we originally had. So if alarm has not been hacked, we will want to continue on what we're doing. And we'll want to do the same for this. Hook this up. Okay, now the alarm event will actually check to see if the alarm has been hacked before it tries to do anything. If it has been hacked, none of this will fire. Only if it's false, which means it hasn't been hacked, will it go off. Now all we need to do is hook up the console so it can be hacked. Let's take a quick look in the scene again. So over in this area, you can see we have that conveniently located terminal. What we're going to do is have the player walk up to it, and if they hit the H key, it'll hack the alarm and allow the player to go by. I've already set up a trigger called Trigger Console that we'll use to determine if the player is close to the console to allow this to happen. Now let's go back into Uscript and set all this up. What we're going to do is set up an on key press event so we can detect when a key has been pressed by the player. So to do that, I'll just go to a new section, go to Events, Input Events, and place on key press. Now, of course, we're not going to want the player to be able to press any key. In our case, we'll just use the H key for hack. So uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to set up a filter. So if I go into Actions, Events, we have Filter on Key Press Event. Hook this up, 
and in this properties we're going to say use H for the key code so now things will only pass by this if the H key's been pressed if any other key's been pressed it'll get blocked here now we're going to need another global variable to find out can the player actually hack the console from where they're standing because we're going to want to use our trigger for that so the first thing we need to do is create a new global variable so let's go up here and actually select these and we'll move them down here so they're more accessible now we'll create a new global bool variable and we're going to call this one can hack and we'll place this up with the other one and I'll copy it because we'll be using it in a bit and we'll actually use it right now by doing a compare bool so again type in compare And so if the H key has been pressed, we'll now see the current state of the variable to find out should we allow the hack to happen or not. In this case, if it's false, we don't want anything to happen. But if it's true and it can be hacked, then we'll actually want to disable the alarm system and do a bunch of other things. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is set our alarm hack variable. So I'm going to copy it paste it down here and this time we're going to want to use a set bool so go to actions set variable set bool move this into place so if it is true we want to set alarm hack to true so what this is doing right now is if we press the H key it'll first check to see can it be hacked if it's false, nothing happens, but if it can, it'll actually set the alarm hack boolean to true, which of course, once that is true, this stuff will stop firing. So the next thing we should probably do is set can hack to true if you're close to the console. So in order to do that, we're actually going to utilize that trigger I showed you earlier. Let's place a new trigger event and set up the console trigger. So all we need to do is set the can hack boolean to true or false depending whether you're on the trigger or not. That way you, when you press the H key, you'll have to also be in the trigger for it to do anything. Otherwise, nothing will happen. For that, we need another set bool. And when you enter the trigger, we'll want to turn it to true. And when you exit the trigger, we'll want to turn it to false. I'll just paste this, hook it up. We should now be able to hack the console when we get close to it. Let's save and give that a try. Okay, let's run the scene. Now try pressing H while we're not near the console doesn't work come over to the console press H and now the door should no longer go off there you go now of course I think what we need to do is do some visual stuff to let people know that they can hack the console and to really show that the console has been hacked and the alarm is no longer active so let's do a few final things to just make all that happen the first thing we should do is notify the player when it's actually okay to try to hack the console to do that, we'll just put some text on screen that says to press the H key when the time is right. For that, I'm just going to use a print debug text. Now we just need to move this down to the trigger. And what we're going to want to do is put another compare bool in here to see if you can hack. If you can, then we're going to want to show the text. If you can't, then we want to hide the text. So we'll just read the state of the can hack. If you can, show text. If you can't, hide text. Now let's just set up the text we're going to show. We'll make this a 16 point font. We'll center the text and for the text we'll just say
press H to hack console. Okay, let's save this and give it a try really quick. Hit play. So as you can see, when you go up to the console, we get the text. If we get away from it, we don't see the text. All right, let's add the final touches, put this thing together. So what we're gonna do now is change a couple of materials, play a sound, and change the color of a light. So what's gonna happen is when you press the console to hack it, we're gonna change these red screens to green, and then also this point light will also turn to green. And we'll play a sound letting the player know that they've successfully hacked the console. Let's go do that new script right now. All right, for starters, let's play a sound effect when the player hacks the console. To do that, we'll need a play sound node. And we just get filling the information. For this, we'll actually use the hack shutdown. It's in the audio folder. Set the volume to one. Don't need it to loop. And for the target, we will use the console trigger. Next up, let's set the light color on that point light. To do that, we're actually going to use reflection. It's a powerful feature in Uscript, which allows you to read in all the stuff that's actually in the game, and it'll visualize it. In this case, we're going to go find the light component on the light we want and change its color. So to do that, we need to go up to Advanced, Properties, Light, and choose Color. This is what a property looks like when it's visualized in Uscript. The first thing we need to do is tell it which light we want to change the color on. So to do that, we'll just go find it over here. In this case, we want Door Point Light. Drag it in as the instance. Now what we're going to do is use a Set Color node in order to tell the point light what color to be. Set color. We want it to fire the same time the sound starts, not when it's done. So make sure it's to the out, not the finished. Hook it up here. And we'll just change the color to green. Now all we need to do is assign the materials for the two objects we want to change, and we're good to go. So let's do that now. Search for material. And in this case, we're actually going to want to use two of them because they're on different material channels. So for now, we'll just set up the first one. So the target of this is going to be the security screen. We need the material name, which we're going to use open. It's in the materials folder. And for this one, we want to keep it on zero. Copy this. And for this one, we want to actually use the door frame. Same material, same location. But this one is on material channel one. Save our work. Now close Uscript and run the game. There you go, as you see the materials changed, the sound played, and the light color changed. And we're good to go. I hope you all enjoyed this preview look at Uscript. Please keep a lookout for more Uscript videos or follow us on Twitter and Facebook for the latest Uscript news. See you soon.